You see a young woman who's obviously lazy from head to toe, lazy with the things of God, lazy domestically, lazy in her commitments to people, just lazy. And you say, well, she has a figure eight, she's beautiful, and all of that, and that's your only reason for going to get married to her? Ruth was beautiful, but she was hardworking. Hello and welcome to Fresh Day. I am Pastor Nkechi Ene and it's my pleasure to welcome you to today's episode of Fresh Day, bringing you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Today on Fresh Day, we continue our series, Marriage 101, 10 Important Things About Marriage. And this is part 30 of that message series, part 30. And what we've done so far, we've been, we're now on the fourth important thing which we started the last episode. The first one we looked at was marriage does not complete you, but rather it complements you. Then we found out that God is the originator of marriage. Then we looked extensively at the third important thing, which is that marriage is a spiritual, scriptural covenant and more than a legal contract. Having finished that, we got into the fourth important thing, which is that marriage is one of the most major an important de destiny decisions you will ever make. As a believer, salvation is the most important destiny decision you'll make. But after that, one of the most important or major important destiny decisions that you will ever make is that of marriage. That decision has the potential to make you or break you. We began to look at the fact that every decision has its effects and consequences. We said effect means a change, which is a result or consequence of an action or another cause. And we said a consequence is a result or effect, typically one that is unwelcome or unpleasant. We began to look at good marriage decisions or good effects that have come out of marriage. And the example we gave was that of Boaz and Ruth. We began with that. And we called Boaz and Ruth a destiny marriage, a destiny marriage. We saw how it all began. Naomi, who was Ruth's mother-in-law, lost her husband. Not long after, her sons died as well. So she and her daughters-in-law, Ruth and Opar, were now widows. And she told them, please go back to your place. You know, there's nothing left for you here. Your husbands are dead. My husband is dead. Even if I was to have children now, are you going to wait for them to grow up to be your husbands? And we found out that Opar went back but, no, but um, Ruth stayed with Naomi. She clung to her, the Bible said. And how did it end? We found that Ruth got married to this man called Boaz, and she became the grandmother of David. Now, we said for that to, be, to have been such a good decision that she took, we need to begin to explore what were the things about both Ruth and Naomi that informed their ability to make the right decision for each other. We did mention that there isn't just one person in the world for you, but that there is somebody in this season and moment of your life, if you're ready to get married, that can be that person for you. So continuing with Boaz and Ruth, a destiny marriage, let's now look at some things to note about Ruth that informed Boaz's decision. So if you're a Boaz, you're a man looking for a woman to get married to, some of these character traits of Ruth are things you might want to look out for. What, remember, we're talking about how to discover the right spouse. You don't want to make, them, make a mistake in this very important, major, destiny decision that can make or break you. It has that potential. So taking the example of Boaz and Ruth as a good marriage decision that had good effects, let us look at Ruth's life and pick up some things about Ruth that will help you as a young man know what to look out for and also help you as a young woman who wants to be found? Who wants to get married? What are some of these wonderful things about Ruth that helped Boaz make that decision? And the next episode, we'll look at some things about Boaz that helped Ruth make the decision to get married to him. Glory be to God. So this is good. Now let's begin with the first one. Ruth had a strong sense of commitment to relationships. That was one powerful thing about Ruth. And we saw that in, in, her, in her decision not to leave her mother-in-law, Naomi. She was a widow. Naomi was a widow, but she stayed. 
Like we said the last time, we may not say that Opa took the wrong decision in leaving, but that was her decision. Ruth definitely took the right decision in staying, and we saw where it ended up. Look at Ruth 1, 14. Then they lifted up their eyes and wept again, and Opa kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Verse 16, but Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. And your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. When she saw she was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her. Look at that depth of commitment. Commitment is a very important character trait to look out for in somebody getting married. How committed are they to other people? How committed are they to their relationships? How committed are they to the things of God? How committed are they to you if you are in, in courtship with them? Commitment is a very, very strong character trait. And Ruth really had no reason Ruth had no reason to be that committed to Naomi. It was almost like she translated her marriage vows to her husband onto her mother-in-law. Until death do us part with your mother-in-law. No matter how sweet Naomi was, she was obviously still a young woman, Ruth. And she could have said, you know, it was nice knowing you, mom, but I need to move on. And she had a permission to move on. But Ruth had a strong sense of commitment to relationships. Another thing we see about Ruth, Let's also see Ruth 4, 15. We still see that there. And may he be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age for your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons has born him. That's the way Ruth was described, as the daughter-in-law who loved her mother-in-law, who was committed to that relationship, even when there was apparently nothing in it for her. Another beautiful thing we see about Ruth, and you might want to look out for this, this is very important, is that Ruth was hardworking. She was not lazy. Ruth was hardworking. She wasn't lazy. Sometimes I wonder when I see some young men, you see a young woman who's obviously lazy from head to toe, lazy with the things of God, lazy domestically, lazy in her commitments to people, just lazy. And you say, well, she has a figure eight, she's beautiful, and all of that. And that's your only reason for going to get married to her? Ruth was beautiful, but she was hardworking. She was not lazy. You know, it doesn't really matter how sophisticated the world becomes. Something that is an entire put-off is when you see a lazy person. Either a lazy man or a lazy woman. Laziness is not desirable. Look at Ruth chapter, Ruth chapter 2 and verse 2. So Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, Please, let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him in whose sight I may find favor. Let me go and work. Let me go and glean heads of grain. And she said to her, go, my daughter. And look at verse 7. And she said, please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and has continued from morning until now, though she rested a little in the house. Is that your testimony, young lady? Are you able to work diligently? Are you somebody who always goes to lay down, like the Bible says here in Proverbs 22, 13, the lazy man or woman says, there is a lion outside. I shall be slain in the streets. There is always an excuse. Oh, I have a headache. Oh, I had a long day at work. Oh, the sun was so hot outside. Oh, I couldn't get a taxi. Do you know how far I had to trek to come to the house? Oh, this happened to me. Oh, my head was aching. And so there's a lion on the street. If this happens, I'll get slain. That's the song of a lazy man, full of excuses. Look at Proverbs 26, 14. As a door turns on its hinges, so does the lazy man on his bed. You know, you know how you, you swing a door. You turn around. You, some people are in bed till 11 o'clock. They're in bed till 12 mid, mid, midday. And mm, if you want to, you're interested in somebody and you find out every single time you call her at 11, she's always in bed 
on her phone, on Instagram, on Facebook, or she's just lying around the place, you might want to get a red flag and ask yourself, is this what I, what I want to spend the rest of my life with? Yeah, you're not going to get married to a slave or something, but you don't want a lazy person around you. And it's not just for domestication. For any other thing, even taking care of the children, even getting up and going to work, even going to get active with the work of her, her hands or his hands, laziness is not desirable. Look at Proverbs 12, 27. The lazy man, this is really bad, does not roast what he took in hunting, but diligence is man's precious possession. The lazy man goes hunting. He gets food. Then he's exhausted. He's too lazy to roast it. Can you believe that? You know, I have done many counseling sessions and I have come across women who, for example, the husband comes home and buys a whole lot of meat, a whole lot, almost like a cow. And he comes home excited and bringing this meat home to my wife. And you see sheer horror on the face of the wife. Oh my goodness, you brought all this meat. This is work. You mean you're expecting me to wash this meat or you're expecting me to cook this meat? Ah, I would have been better off just sending the driver down the road to pick up little, little bits of meat. The lazy man does not roast what he took in hunting. And in this, some of these cases I have seen, the meat actually goes bad or is dumped in the freezer, unwashed, and it's not taken care of. And eventually, the whole thing has to be thrown out because the person it was given to was too lazy to prepare it. Or somebody comes home and says, oh, I brought back this big basket of tomatoes. And instead of seeing excitement on the face of the wife, what you see is, it's the amount of tomatoes. Who's going to wash them? Who is going to blend them? No, 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 you shouldn't have done this, my husband. I don't need this here. The lazy man does not roast what he took in hunting. Ruth was hardworking. She was not lazy. He says she worked, she desired to go and work. Glory be to God. And when she got there, she walked from morning and only stopped a little bit in the house to rest. Ruth was expectant for God's favor. She didn't depend on herself. She knew that she had natural disadvantages. She was a widow already. Someone could have looked at her and said, Boaz could very well have gotten married to some young woman who had never been married before. But she said instead in verse 2, of Ruth too. So Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, please let me go to the field and glean heads of green after him in whose sight I may find favor. In whose sight I may find favor. Verse 10. So when she saw Boaz, she fell on her face and bowed to the ground and said to him, why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? So she knew her disadvantage. She was a foreigner. She was a widow. But she went out expectant for the favor of God. That's what you want to be as a young woman, as a young man. That's what you want to look out for as a young man looking out or as a young woman wanting to be found. You want somebody who is expectant for God's favor. God's favor overwhelms natural disadvantages. And God's favor does not exalt natural advantages. I'll say it again. God's favor overwhelms natural disadvantages. The fact you don't have a very good university degree, the fact that your social status is not considered high, the fact that, you know, you, you, there are different disadvantages naturally around you. The favor of God swallows up all of that. And you've got to be expectant for God's favor. But then the favor of God also doesn't pay attention to your natural advantages. The fact that you have a good university degree, the fact that your parents are rich, that doesn't make you very much because the, the favor of God overwhelms all of that. Look at what it says here. Look at what it says in Ecclesiastes 9, 9, 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift. So you're swift. That's an advantage. But the race is not to you. The battle is not to the strong. You're strong. Everybody expects you to be the one that is, that is picked. But no, the battle is not to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding. No favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. That means favor can happen to men who don't have skill. Ruth was expectant of God's favor. She stepped out and said, let me go out that I may find favor. And when she found, went for Boaz, she came in contact with Boaz. She said, why have I found favor in your sight? And why have you taken notice of me, seeing my disadvantage 
that I'm a foreigner. Verse 12, the Lord repay your work and a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel under whose wings you have come for refuge. Ruth was expectant for the favor of God. Glory be to God. Another beautiful thing about Ruth, Ruth did not prioritize physical and material parameters. Young men, open your eyes wide, open your ears wide. Ruth did not prioritize physical and material parameters. Look at Ruth 3.10. Then he said, Blessed are you of the Lord, my daughter, for you have shown more kindness at the end than at the beginning, in that you did not go after young men, whether poor or rich. We already see here that Boaz wasn't necessarily a very young man. But he said to her, look, you didn't, the young men around, poor or rich, you didn't go after them. Ruth paid no attention to material. It wasn't her priority, let me put it that way. She didn't prioritize it. Are you a young woman who the only thing you're looking out for in a husband is the one that can buy you a car, the one that can build, build you a house in two or three years, the one that can make sure all the gadgets are in your kitchen? Are you willing to understand that there are little beginnings? Are you a young man and are you looking out for somebody who you think prioritizes material and financial things and therefore you want to plug yourselves to them? No, Ruth did not prioritize material and physical and all those other resource, advantages that young women prioritize. Ruth was not like that. Glory be to God. Boaz said about her, you did not go after young men, poor or rich. That was not your priority. That is a good character trait. That is a good testimony for a young woman. Look at another thing about Ruth that is very important. Ruth was respectful and obedient. Isn't this awesome? This again is something that modernity seems to have started wiping out as being relevant. You meet some young women who are just downright rude. Some people who just do not even know how to say basic good morning, good afternoon, how are you? Or how to good afternoon, sir, when you see an older person. These are good values, good character traits. Ruth was very respectful and obedient. She really had no ties anymore to Naomi. Not only was she committed to her, she didn't stay with her and become a thorn in the flesh to her. She stayed with Naomi and remained respectful and obedient to her. Glory be to God. What a nice fragrance comes out when you see a young woman being respectful to an older woman. What a nice fragrance is released when you see a young person being respectful to an older person. How are you training your children? How are you preparing your young girls for marriage? Is it just how much hair you put on them? Just how much makeup you give to them? How many nice clothes you dress them in so they can walk around half naked and people can see them and consider them good for marriage? Are your girls respectful? Are they obedient? Are you teaching your young men to be respectful and obedient? Or has sophistication and modernity wiped, that, wiped them out? No. Ruth was respectful and she was obedient. Look at what she said in Ruth 2.22. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that you go out with these, his young men and that people do not meet you in any other field. Naomi basically gave her a suggestion that was literally an instruction. But it was such a, it is good if you do that. Immediately what happened? So she stayed close by the young men of Boaz, just as Naomi told her, to glean until the end of the barley harvest and wheat harvest. And she dwelt with her mother-in-law. Verse 5, Ruth, Ruth chapter 3. And she said to her, all that you say to me, I will do. What a spirit of respect and obedience. All that you say to me, I will do. So she went down to the threshing floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law instructed her. When you meet a young lady and she can't even be respectful to her own mother or her own siblings, you want to consider that a red flag. How does she talk to her mother? How does she relate with her father? How does she relate with her uncles and her aunties? When she meets an older person in the elevator, how does she, does she step aside for them? If she comes into a room, and there's an older man standing up and she's sitting down. Does she naturally stand up and beckon to the older man to sit down? These are character traits that make you stand out in a crowd. Ruth was respectful and she was obedient. And what I find to be one of the most beautiful things about Ruth 
is the last thing we're going to look at. Ruth had built a good testimony for herself. Ruth had built a good testimony for herself. Not only did she have these beautiful character traits we've looked at, she was committed, she didn't prioritize material things, she was hardworking, she wasn't lazy, she was respectful and obedient. Not only was that her character, she had built a reputation that matched her character. She had built a good testimony for herself. If people ask about you, young lady, what are they going to say about you? I know sometimes it's not 100% in your hands, but a lot of times it is. What is the testimony out there about you? People ask questions. What are they going to say? I know that's old-fashioned. Nobody should ask questions. If they want to talk to me, they should walk up to me and talk to me. Oh, really? People still ask questions. Ah, there's that babe over there. I've been thinking, of, that babe, don't go there. Don't go near her. She is so rude. She is so disrespectful. Oh, that babe, she's very fine, but she's so lazy. What is the testimony that you have built about yourself? Look at Ruth 2.11. And Boaz answered and said to her, it has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. What a powerful statement. It has been fully reported to me all that you have done and how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and have come to a people whom you did not know before. What a testimony. Your selflessness, your service, your commitment has been fully reported to me. And this was the man that was going to become her husband. So imagine if the report he had heard was this girl is so nasty. She gives Naomi grief. I don't even know why she didn't go back to her place. She's just a horrible woman. She's her stress that killed her husband and all of that. Do you think Boaz would have made the decision that it was Ruth that he was going to redeem and get married to? Look at Ruth 3, 3.11. And now my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you all that you request. For all the people of my town know that you are a virtuous woman. Glory be to God. What a testimony. Her testimony matched her character and she had built a good testimony for herself. Thank you, Father, for this beautiful destiny marriage. You're showing us between Boaz and Ruth. Thank you for unveiling the character of Ruth to us and helping guide us helping guide us even in our discovery of the right spouse for us even at this time. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Are you alive but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question. And he loves you just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide. And he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud from the depth of your heart and you will be saved Lord Jesus I come to you today I believe you are the son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. 
congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Freshdew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.